Hi, we're going to talk about resonance structures now. How to do loose dot structures for resonance structures. Now here's the deal with resonance structures. We'll have a molecule in, uh, in nature and one Lewis dot structure doesn't quite accurately represent how that molecule exists in nature. And so we have to draw multiple structures of it. So let's begin. I have four examples here, common examples, and I think it will help you. Okay, we're going to start with an SO2. Um, sulfur, of course, has six valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons, and we've got two oxygens. Um, because we only have one sulfur, I'm going to make that the central atom. Um, so oxygen needs two electrons. I'm going to do a double bond right off the bat to take care of an oxygen. So we'll share two electrons with the oxygen. Um, so this oxygen is good. It shared two electrons, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons, but because we're sharing electrons, it senses two, four, six, eight. Octet, done. Now this sulfur um, in the center here, it shared two electrons. Remember it had six valence electrons, so there would be um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, well, let's try doing a double bond and just see what happens. If I do a double bond, with this oxygen. Now this oxygen, great, senses two, four, six, eight, but look at the sulfur. Two, four, six, eight, ten. It expanded the octet. Um, and we try to we try to avoid expanding the octet at any cost. You first try and do regular, hey, can I do an octet? If that doesn't work, second thing you look at is is there a coordinate covalent bond? And if there's not, then you expand. So before I expand, I want to see if we could do a coordinate covalent bond. Um, and I know that both sulfur and oxygen, because they only need two electrons, often they can easily do a coordinate covalent bond. So let's come back. I don't want to expand that octet. As much as possible, we try to avoid expanding octets. Um, so I have that lone pair. The oxygen can move in and say, hey, let's share, but I won't give you anything and do the coordinate covalent bond. So that sulfur is going to share both electrons, like that as a bond, with the oxygen, and the oxygen doesn't have to give any of its valence electrons. So the oxygen, there's its one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons, but it senses two, four, six, eight. Now look at the sulfur, two, four, six, eight. It's not expanded, perfect. That's going to be stable. Now, where the resonance comes in, you might be looking at this saying, well, Mrs. Lobb, why did you put the double bond on the right-hand side? Well, honestly, it doesn't matter which side we put it on. I am going to write this the other way with the double bond on the left-hand side. We'll have the sulfur, central atom, double bond on the left-hand side, single bond on the right-hand side. That is a resonance structure. What we do is we put a double arrow in between Okay, now here's the deal. Um, as a reminder, a single bond has a bond order of one, a double bond has a bond order of two. So the single bond is a longer bond and the double bond is a little bit shorter. When we get data from this, here's what we find out. Both of those bonds are actually a one and a half. You would expect that we'd see the length of one and the length of two, a little bit smaller. But in actuality, they're identical and they're in between the length of a single bond and a double bond. Here's what happens. That double bond resonates. Goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That, and that's that word resonance. That you have, in essence, a one and a half bond because that double bond goes back and forth so fast in between the single and the double. It gives it the shape that those are actually a more in between a one and a half bond <laughs> between the single and the double. And this is how we write it. Um, so that's indicating resonance that that double bond is switching places. You can see that it's, it's switching places. So there's your resonance structure. So how do you know to draw a resonance structure? Okay, here's a rule of thumb. It's not 100% perfect, but for your first year chemistry, it will get you through. Um, if your central atom has identical substituent atoms, so my central atom sulfur has identical oxygens attached, but they have different bonds. I have a single and a double. That means you're going to have to write a resonance structure. You have to write the other possibility of how that can exist in nature. 
Okay, so there is our sulfur dioxide. Let's do a resonance structure with an ion. So we're going to do a carbonate ion. Carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons. We've got three of them. I also noticed that we have a minus two. It means that we can add an electron, actually add two electrons anywhere that we need them. So let's put um, the atom, our central atom, carbon, fewest number of electrons, and we only have one of it. Um, I'm going to start out by giving a double bond to one oxygen, just so I know one oxygen is taken care of. Okay, so that oxygen, since it's two, four, six, eight, we use two of the valence electrons from um, the carbon. And so now I have two valence electrons left. You're probably seeing where this is going. If we do a single bond to each oxygen, okay, carbon looks good, two, four, six, eight. The oxygen, it shared one electron, so it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. The oxygen is going to sense two, four, six, seven. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take one of those extra electrons and put it right there. This oxygen shared one electron, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six um, valence electrons. If we count it, it senses two, four, six, seven. So we're going to take that second electron and put it right there. Okay, now I look at this and go, oh, the carbon is surrounded by the same substituent atoms. It has the same oxygens around it. Uh, but there's different bonds. There's a double bond and two single bonds. So we're going to draw this the other two ways. We could have the double bond over here on the far left side, and we can have the double bond on the very top oxygen. All right. So this one has three resonance structures. It's going to be resonating between that double bond moving to three different positions. So there you have it. Be re Another really common one. I'm trying to give you the ones that you are most likely to encounter and see, at least the most often. Okay, this is called benzene, C6H6. Benzene is our most common nonpolar solvent. Kind of an interesting story. Um, this was around 1825. It was a German chemist Oh, forgive me if you speak German and I pronounce this um, incorrectly. I believe it's Kekule. It was, this was his name. And if you know how to say that, fabulous. I think it's Kekule. Um, we, the scientists knew that there were the six carbons and the, um, the six hydrogens, but they didn't know the structure. And it goes that he had two visions, is what he called them, um, where the atoms um, kind of look like snakes and they attached themselves, um, tail head, tail head, tail head, and they were going around in a circle like this. And it was from that that he got the idea of a resonance structure. So here you have uh, six carbons, and you've definitely seen this. Um, if you see that, um, this is going to be uh, your six-membered ring right there. Now we've got six hydrogens. Um, so it means that you've got one hydrogen coming off of each of these carbons, but there's an issue with that. Um, the carbon only senses two, four, six electrons, and carbon will always have an octet. It'll always have eight. So this is what he came up with, that there were iso um, excuse me, oscillating double bonds. Um, so you have these double bonds, and now every single carbon is going to sense two, four, six, eight. There's your octet. Um, however, those bonds could be written another way. We could write, let's see, the double bonds on the opposite uh, sides, like this. Um, then you've got your hydrogen, like this, on each one of them. That is a resonance structure. Those double bonds oscillate. They, they oscillate. So a couple of ways that we write this just really fast. Um, using um, our organic uh, kind of shorthand, that's a benzene ring. And you could write it that way, or you could write it uh, this way. And it's the same thing. It, those double bonds oscillate between the positions. Sometimes you'll see benzene written like this with a circle showing that that's resonance, that those 
um, those double bonds are oscillating. They're resonating. They're resonating. Um, and that right there would be maybe the an accurate picture of what Kekule uh, envisioned, his visions. He had two visions um, in the 1800s. Um, so kind of interesting. So there's benzene. It's a resonant structure where those double bonds are going to resonate back and forth. So resonant structures. Um, central atom has identical, and this is not 100%, but for what you see in a first year chemistry class, it's going to have identical substituents around that central atom, but there are different bonds, single, double, even triple, and so you have to write every possibility, every possibility of how that structure could exist. Put double arrows between it, you've got it, resonant structures. Good job and have a wonderful day.